You're listening to So Organized Style Podcast. So Organized Style is produced by me, Maria Theoharis, Susan Goodwin, and Anne Wally. When you shorten our name to SOS, you'll realize that within each episode, we'll try and make sure that if there are any issues that our listeners need help with, they will always be able to find someone to go to on our resources page on the website plus from listening to people who are talking to us as well. This episode of So Organised Style is a chat that I had with a friend that I made on Instagram who lives in Taipei, Taiwan. You probably know who she is. It's Raquel. Raquel does a lot of refashioning. She's retired, living in a country that was not where she grew up. And she's doing what she can to make sure that she's wearing clothes that suit her lifestyle now. Raquel shares the joy that she has in making clothes from dead stock items and surplus garments in Taipei. So what are you working on at the moment? Um, Well, I've been trying to do a vintage pattern and um, the pattern I picked is just very simple, 8811 just has the kimono sleeve and a flared skirt or a circle skirt but in the the practice material i used had, was very stiff so mm. of course like you know jetsons because they the, the sides stick out so that told, told me i need to use a softer fabric um and then it is something typical to something that i usually wear with a bigger skirt and yeah. a tighter bodice so um i it's it, it is very simple which is good but um Part of my thing was, okay, I'm going to explore more with vintage this year, and it's already, what, August, <laughs> so I need to get on that. I did a couple, but, um, but you know, I guess starting with a simpler one and then moving on to the next one, because it is way too simple for, for my liking now. I'm thinking, oh, why did oh, I think that? <laughs> that's actually a good thing, because you're yeah. discovering what you're, you know, what you were um, hesitant about. It's now like, oh, well, that's... Let me move yeah. on from here. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. And and it did also help me kind of figure out, you know, what the final product material should be because a lot of times I'll put a lot of work into all the walls and mm. just getting it fit right, and then I make one of the nice dress, and I'm and so I'd have three practice pieces, and then one nice one. Now I've decided do do one practice piece and kind of work out all those things and make a couple of. The nicer ones, because if you know you've worked that all out, you know it'll fit you. And I like making things over and over. Mm. Um, so once yeah. once I have a style that fits me. So what I I did was I grabbed a couple of dresses that I I've made a couple times, and that mm. um, cause the first time that I ever put up anything that got any interest was this dress that my son gave bought silk for me from Hong Kong, mm. and. Um, you know, I kind of kept it there and kind of touched it and looked at it, but was worried, oh, no, you know, I don't want to wreck it. But I had made this um, this Simplicity 1325 several times. I had modified the top, but right. I said, oh, okay, I'm going to try it. So when I put it up on Instagram, I've got, like, more than a you know, couple hundred likes, which never happened before. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and, and you know, it, 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 it's really something when you have something that kind of people, the fabric everybody likes, the style was very simple, and it was something I had copied from Pinterest. So I said, oh, this looks like my fabric. Let me try it. Um, but I'm going to give you a peek. Oh, thank you. And we'll put a photo of this on the, on the show notes. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I have. Remember her name, but she does illustrations from Australia. She also illustrates Susan, Susan Goodwin. Yeah, yeah. So she, when she put it up on illustrations, on her illustrations, I almost fell over because that was one of the first things I had done. That was a little, a little different. You know what I mean? That caught some attention. Yes. Yeah. But I've made like six or eight versions of this, and then just it's just a very simple design bodice and clear skirt. So the one that you're showing me now is uh, a darker version? Darker version, yeah. Yep. And it's just a simple, I think, it, you know, for my shape and size, that works best for me. And I feel comfortable in it. So. And I know you do a lot of walking, and that skirt style is really great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. It is comfortable, it's cool, and and it's appropriate if we go to a museum, if we go to a nice yes. dinner, or if we go to just a local place, it, it still fits, so it's nice. Yeah, it, and both versions look good, and I know that um, it'll be good to have the uh, that original version that you had the drawing of. We'll put those. Uh, we'll put those images on the show notes for people. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. People would love to see it because they're hearing about it, and it's good to have okay. images can, for people to see. Well, so the the sewing story and the whole. Do you call it? Um, so when you buy, you know, the fabric or the clothing. What yeah. do you call that? Are you calling that refashioning or what do you call it? I, I mean, I know it's maybe called upcycling or refashioning. I call it refashioning only because, you know, I see yeah. that out there. But, um, you know, one, I've, I have always had an eye for, even before I started sewing when I was back home in the States, I said, oh, that would really look cute if they had done, you know, chopped off the bottom and add different panels or whatever. So I, I would look at things and see how I could change the to fit me or fit my style. So um, what I'm wearing today is a little tunic that I made, but it was really a baby doll dress. So it still had this tiny little bodice, but a giant skirt. And there's no way that this would fit me as the, the way it was originally uh, made. So I, I knew if I added a panel to the side, it was four inches on the side, yeah. that I could, you know, open up the skirt, take that side panel piece, and then have it fit the bodice, because I haven't changed anything else on the bodice. It has really cute little bags. It sits really well. Yeah. And so just that little piece and then a, a more of a tunic shape, which is this is a newer shape for me, but I thought I kind of like it. And um, and I have a few of these. I mean, I don't, I buy the, the these dresses, these tiny little baby doll dresses, because they have a big skirt and a lot of fabric at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And my husband sees me walking with these, and he's like, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> There's no way it's going to fit. But, you know, he's seen now that I can kind of fool around with them and, and make them fit, make them work. Because he's seen you, he's seen the original, and then he's seen the one that you, you're you actually wearing out and about in Taipei. That's right. That's doing right. your normal thing. <laughs> and he's, well, it's, you know, usually but I, I, we work in the day, he reads and plays music, and and I um, go sew in my sewing room, and I come out and show him what I'm you know, working on a couple of times. And then by the end of the day, we're ready to go for a walk. And we say, okay, we're going to take a picture. And the light's usually good at 4 or 5 in the evening. And we kind of think, okay, which background would look nice? Which part of the neighborhood? You know, is there a storefront? Or is there um, a nice garage? It has, it has a shiny, shiny door. So we'll stop there and take a few pics. And he's really good about you know, and having patience with me and making me laugh, so that that shows up for the picture. It does. It really does. And you've got such a good um, uh, array of places that you can take the photos. Just from yeah. looking at your Instagram, it's so obvious that you live in yeah. quite a vibrant area. Yeah, yeah. The door front, the flowers. Yesterday we just saw a just a wall. Of blooming yellow flowers of course it really didn't go with what i was wearing but it goes with everything because it was so beautiful so <laughs> it was great yeah yeah oh good and so your journey your sewing journey when did that start well when we retired um here in 2012 mm -hmm. um, no 2013 i think anyway when we retired here <laughs> <laughs> well i at home i you know, i was my kids are all grown. I was teaching. And for fun, for recreational shopping, I'd go to the different stores and, and shop and find little outfits. And, and um, But then once we retired, our budget changed. And our living here, um, everybody is pretty tiny. And so having, you know, and the stores, you know, for me, I knew I couldn't go shopping. And if I did go shopping, I couldn't go at the same rate I was going at home. And I thought, well, one of the things I could do mm -hmm. um because when I went shopping, it was difficult to find things that I like that fit me because most of the things were pretty tiny um, that I could learn to sew. So we really made that the first six months of looking for a mannequin, looking for a sewing machine, looking and kind of going to different areas of the city and exploring about, okay, the way you, where you buy the um, mannequin, it's five or six rows of shops that sell the same things, and it's just filled with mannequins. 
And, you know, we, we just had fun kind of learning about the language. We, what are we looking for? How are we going to find it? Yeah. Um, so, so once we did all that, we got set up the machine and the mannequin. The biggest problem I had was patterns. Um, and we didn't have a printer at that time. We were living in a tiny little apartment. And, uh, so, and I didn't really know about PDS. I did find some burgas. And then eventually learned how to go to the little local school store, and they would print it out for me. Oh, well, that's um, good. Yeah, but st- I I still struggled with with the PDFs at the beginning. So I made a lot of Japanese uh, clothing from the Japanese sewing books. Okay. Not really, not really knowing how to sew and not knowing how to read Japanese, <laughs> but it kind of came together. All those pictures and diagrams, and then. Um, then Patronus, there's a bookstore here that has a Patronus magazine, and I can read some Spanish. And then um, I was able to kind of put those together. And those were those are sim- more simple designs. Okay. And they're less busy on the little drawing of the tracing of the pattern. So I really worked through those two things the first few years. And then my then I saw some patterns on special, one ninety nine from the states. So I said, Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna order a few of these. Until I got my eighty dollars shipping. Oh, I know. I understand that dilemma. So then I realized that's not going to work. But then you know, occasionally my sister will go out in a big, uh, a big shopping spree for me, and we'll we'll you know send some over. Or somebody comes to visit, I'll get another package of ten patterns. So so that's nice. So now I have more than enough patterns. <laughs> <laughs> I have to work through them. So that was the biggest hurdle was the patterns, just learning how to sew. But, you know, YouTube and, you know, everybody's tutorials, it's really been a great kind of resource to kind of say, oh, I've watched that same little thing. How do you put in the zipper over and over and over, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know that there was one that I kept looking at for putting zippers in jeans on YouTube, and I think I bookmarked it now. So yeah. just what the instructions are. The yeah. one that I go to. They just go there, yeah. Mimi yeah. G was one for me. I'd watch Mimi G and she had a pattern that I had gotten and I didn't really know what to do with it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And just watch that over and over and, and that, that really helped. So now I know how to put it in a jean zipper and I still am working on the rest of the pants. I haven't really <laughs> got that the hell together. But but it's fun. It's fun to work through. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah, and you're doing it in stages, and the stages are what you know now. So that's good because then you're building up that level of understanding and skill. Yeah. yeah. And, and I like finding, well, I found um, this winter where a lot of Jap- um, Chinese uh, chimsoms, which are traditional Chinese dresses, yes. and a lot of them are, they're, they're not factory made, they're handmade for a person. So just opening them up and looking at the insides to see how they're made and to see all the work that goes into them, mm-hmm. it's just been it's been great. And when I was uh, in, in this winter, I just got into velvet and I found all these velvet some you know dresses, uh, and they were six dollars a piece for long dresses. And so I could buy two black ones and make myself a dress, or buy um, you know just different things that just I could put a lot together with velvet that I didn't think I could could try. So the refashioning this winter really took off was with, with the velvet. Yeah, uh, and velvet can be a little bit tricky, so it was good that you were getting sort of the ready-to-wear sort of uh, quality velvet rather than sometimes when you buy it off the roll, it's not really right. that right. quality. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah, that's one of the things about refashioning is you can find really nice quality fabric and then use that to to make your own little project. So I can show you two of the refashioning. Do you want to see those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at them. Okay. And and we'll put them on the show notes. Okay. Yeah. It has a linen skirt which has all these little appliques on it. It's really cute. And it's originally, most of these dresses are like this. They're originally... um, this is the bodice, but I mm-hmm. took the bodice off, and then again I added a panel to the side. Yep, so that you've got the width there. Yeah, and then um, when I saw this lace top, I just thought, oh, let me see if I could chop that in half and throw it on there. <laughs> and it really, it looks, it fits beautifully. Um, linen is so nice, it's just a nice quality, so, so that's been fun. 
and you know, lace is something you can always use. Now this is yes. Doctor. This this store, he um, he's really good about uh, just having hundreds of the same type of item. So when I saw this fabric, yes. yeah. Little chiffoni skirt, thinking, what am I going to do with this? But if I, I bought like, I bought like ten of them, but different, different ones with different colors, and so they'd match up. And so I knew if I put two of them together, mm. I'd have enough skirt. And then this lace top is pretty over the top. I mean, it's really it's gorgeous. Well, it's a little, it's a little much. But I thought, okay, as a tiny bodice, it will probably work with, with this. And when I went home to visit my cousins and my sisters, were all just like. Isn't that just so different? <laughs> it, they 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 liked it, but it is it's a little over the top. It's a fun dress because it also has the handkerchief hem and all these features that you know if I would have put in all the time to do that. I know it would have taken you like days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And but now I kind of look at these and say, okay, how can I how can I learn from this? What can I do to kind of? And my sister, who um, I, I recently went to to went home and my sister was a big sewist and she went and she died recently so her husband said come and look through her things and whatever you like Aww. well she has a pattern of handkerchief hem skirts <laughs> and so i'm like okay now i have a i have an example and i have a pattern so i'm going to try and work on that it's a really pretty look yeah yeah those two are, are my big refashioning kind of hit. You know, there's a lot of misses, <laughs> but that's kind of the fun of it too. It's kind of be able to experiment and not worry about, oh, this is also precious. Yeah, that's right. And when you do your practice versions, do you use refashion fabrics as well? I, a lot of times I do, and then a lot like lately, I just went to IKEA and found sheets that were under you know eight dollars, and so like, all that fabric. Is, is a way to, to kind of work through some some, but when I first started sewing, and I, and I know I've told you about my fabric guy. Yes, <laughs> that was one of the reasons I would be very open about. Oh, let's try this. Let's try that. When you can get three yards of fabric for three dollars, and then you know every week I was going there and coming home with my little thirty dollars stash of thirty yards, 30 yards of, fabric. of fabric. That. That kind of was like okay, and it was all different types of things. He lots of knits, lots of um, denim, lots of just just the whole variety of fabrics. And so it's good because then I learned about how to use some of that fabric. I don't know what it's called, but I do know how to how to work with it a little bit. That's good, yeah. And I mean, it was only what thirty dollars for thirty yards. That's a bargain. Yeah, and and it's it. it Sometimes we're hit and miss there. I think, mm. oh, I think this is going to work with this, but then not really knowing how to work with the material or, you know, the structured dress shouldn't have that fabric, something like that. Then then it didn't feel so terrible. I mean, and I was learning, so that did help me kind of go through, I don't know environmentally how great it was, but mm. I did, did get a chance to, <laughs> to work with, with lots of different types of fabric with that. And I do miss my fabric guy. Yeah. Oh, Th that relationship's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and now I have a, this resale market person. There's two of them. There's the one with the dead stock. And he's, you know, he'll try and talk to me a little bit and, and I'll try and answer. You know, That's <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, there's the, the lady that sells really nice pieces where she had, you know, more formal dress and the velvet. Oh, she had all those velvet dresses in the winter. Now she has all these pleated dresses. Mm. And I tried a couple of pleated dresses and the pleated skirts. And it just really that didn't work for me. And once I figured out if I, again, use that short bodice and then a, a longer skirt, all of a sudden all those pleated dresses, I have like four of them, they all just came together. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah, and I and I and I watched someone else on, on YouTube who did a refashioning of a skirt, and I didn't realize that she she looked at the measurements and then made those her own and cut off four inches, and all of a sudden the volume of that skirt wasn't so big, and it just made a huge difference over how it fits you. Because I was just using the skirt instead of saying, "Oh, wait a minute, I should make sure 
it fits the dimensions of my, my dress. Oh, yeah. 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 I ended up buying some, when I was in Hong Kong, I bought some micro pleated fabric and I still don't know what to do with it because I know that your style is more um, flowy, um, whereas mine tends to be quite fitted. So I'm right, racking right. my brains as to what to do next, but I think it'll come. Well, and I've just seen so many changes, so many different ways to use the pleated fabric on Pinterest. Cause mm. I have a little Pinterest board with just pleats. And oh my gosh, there's, they're doing so much with that. I mean, I, I can't imagine using it in a top, but they had it with like a binding, a thick binding, and then the, then the, okay. pleated. And, yeah. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. So with your sewing and with the changes that you've had to go through with your health, yeah. um, what sort of um, tips and tricks have you been able to um, work on that work for you? Well, when I first started sewing, I you know would go in my sewing room and just do lots of different things. I'm kind of mm-hmm. like, have a project going here and two or three two or three things at a time. It's like the way I like to work. Yes. And got sick. I um I you know would get up and do just one thing maybe once a week that was a big deal for me I was like okay I can get in there today and work on and work on a sewing thing so it really taught me when I came on the other end of it to kind of slow down and have a little more patience with each of those projects I still am doing two or three things at a time yes. but I'm doing them as kind of frenzied where I like oh I have to get this done and more it's, it's a little more slow down a little bit and I can have fun and kind of work with it that way um as far as like uh, since i have a on the steps me you have one side where um i have i need a bra that's going to support me yes and then i have uh the, the other side in the first Space. year yeah, yeah yeah i have to i have to kind of fill it in but the first few years you don't really wear anything that tight fit because it's uncomfortable but yes. now it's been a couple of years, and I can wear a good fitting bra and nice support. And then it was what to do with the other side. And the one thing about taking pictures with of my outfits, it's really helped me because at first it was I didn't realize what I looked like with without one. And then once I, you know, I found a, a pad that fit my bra, then it was like okay. I, I get a better measure. It's never perfect. It's going to be a little off, but that's okay. It just has to, it's incidental. People aren't really taking a big, you know, close up look. But, um, so I, I looked around to figure out how to, how to fix, you know, how to make a little pocket in my bra. Yeah. Uh, to fill in one of these pads. And, um, again, I'm a lot uh, larger than the most average person here. And so when we were in Hong Kong, there was a man with, all these pads, like he had knee pads and elbow pads and, you know, pads for swimming suits. And it's just this little um, vendor out in the street. And I'm like, oh, here's here's a nice size pad. This is going to work for me. So when I went up to him, I said, well, do you just sell the one side? And he laughed and said, no, 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 you have to buy both. Okay. <laughs> but, but I did. And it works out fine. I mean, I really have uh, learned how to put little... Um, stretchy material, um, just underwear or a kind of swimsuit lining material that I got from my little vendor um, and just line the bra and make a little pocket and, you know, put it in there. And um, my biggest problem was getting the right size. And so I was able to put two in there and all of a sudden it looks like, you know, it's very comfortable and it just looks normal. It doesn't, doesn't, you know, make you stop and say, what's up over there? True. And you feel comfortable now when you've done that? Yes, yes. For the most part. It gets a little tight at the end of the day, so I'll usually take them out. That's a good one. Yeah. (laughs) Just so it's not as pressured. But but for the most part, that's that's the one thing. I didn't didn't really talk a lot about my breast cancer before. Mm -hmm. And even with the sewing, it's just, it's something that, you know, we went through and and everything is fine. And um, sewing is one thing. And you know, being sick was another, but it, it kind of helped me get through. Um, and now, it, you know, I just keep learning and how to, how to sew and have fun with it. That's great. And you also share some of that knowledge with others on Instagram too, don't you? 
Yeah, um, well, I, I, you know, a little bit. I yeah, a little bit. The, there's a, a Facebook group, flat and asymmetrical, and then there's um, a, a friend I've met, Barbara Marks, or she has a, uh, a blog called Flatter Plat Patter. So okay. she had a double mastectomy, and she, she talks about how she modifies her um, dresses to fit her new shape. And um, so it is nice to kind of connect with other people and say how, like, one of the first things when I was going to go swimming, I didn't have a clue about, you know, you know, what to do with my swimming suit. And she, she recommended that I use one of those scrunchies, you know, body wash things. They're all kind of like a net. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, and she said, because if you put that in your swimming suit, it's going to drain right out, but it's still going to keep the shape. And that's been great. I've been using that for the last few years to, um, you know, just finish swimming. Shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep the shape while I'm swimming. Well, I don't really swim, but while I'm in the water. That's good. And look, yeah. you're doing a lot of, you're sewing, you're making sure that you're healthy and that when you're out and about, you feel comfortable and yeah. you, and that that makes you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. It's really good. Good, good, good. Cool. Was there anything else you wanted to share? Well, I, uh, I wanted to share some of my more wackier makes. Oh, which, yes, please. <laughs> because part of these things is like mm -hmm. I've, I've made a dress and it just didn't work and I made another dress or I bought a dress. I thought, oh, these will look great together and then they didn't work. So I like to, nothing's ever done. If I, if I, if I think, oh, that just didn't work, I'll keep going back to it and pull it back out and kind of reconfigure it. So this is, this is one of my favorites. So we're about to look at some of Raquel's wackier makes. It's it's when I got into this little overskirt thing. That's the other thing I've been doing is adding a little overskirt. I have this uh, gingham dress that has a little overskirt. That that's a, a favorite. But one of the first things I did was I made it's a sheer fabric. So um, and I got this from Hong Kong, and I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to just I just had those two together. So right. that when I when I saw this at the um, at the thrift market, I thought, "Oh, this would be fun over it." And uh, it's a little different. <laughs> it's a little different, but the colors are cohesive. The colors and the fabric, everything works together. It does. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Great. Yeah. Wacky All number. Right. Is there another one, or was that the only one that you wanted to show? Well, the gingham one, I, I, with the overskirt, is something that kind of came together. Mm. Um, that, that's in the other room. But do you know which one I mean? Don't yeah, you, you wore you wore it overseas when you were on holidays. You had some yeah. shots of that, yeah. So we'll include that one. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, you know, it's been fun. It's a fun kind of, it's fun having something to work on, something to kind of be, have a creative outlet. It doesn't have to be. You know, oh, such a big, big deal. But it is nice to kind of think, oh, what am I going to work on today? What's 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 my plan? Especially being retired and being far away from everybody in our family, it's nice to have something to, to kind of work on. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to tell you one more thing. My granddaughter, yeah. my granddaughter's dress. She, yeah, I made her a lot of really cute little dresses when she was younger, and you know, the tulle and little princess type, and she was. She would wear them, you know, maybe when she was five, up until when she was five or six. And now that she's older, a little bit more picky about, you know, what she'll, she'll ask oh. her something, but then it doesn't really fit to what she wanted. So this, this last, she comes over every Sunday. And so we decided to work on it together this week. So I had a couple of bodices already cut. And we picked out fabric we liked. Um, and then tried to kind of puzzle them together. But then when she told me, I want a one-shouldered ruffle top, I was just, okay. <laughs> and my husband thinks there's probably a, a superhero or a cartoon or somebody that has a one-shouldered thing. So we thought, okay. Um, but, you know, as we were working through the ruffle, she was like, I don't know about that. Or as we are kind of putting the skirt together, she was like, okay. But once it all came together, she just lit up, and it just worked out so beautifully. And it fit her fine. I mean, it's a little, the back seam is a little crooked, but I, I felt like I needed to make sure that shoulder didn't fall down. Oh, so, I know. Yeah. 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 So, But otherwise, um, it was so delightful to see her so happy with something she had imagined. Because she's seen me sewing all these years, 
that she goes, oh yeah, Grandma, can you put that together? That was just so much fun. Yeah, it would have been fun. And she looked like the dress that you showed me, the, the one yeah. shoulder dress. She yeah. looked great. It was really, yeah. it suited her to a T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really did. It's just, she just walked around and generally, you know, she'll try it on for Grandma, maybe. But this time she didn't want to take it off. So oh. that was nice. Oh, nice. star for grandma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was cool. Oh, cool. Um, so how are you going with your Minerva projects? Um, well, I think I'm still having trouble by seeing what fabric looks like online. Mm -hmm. So my first project, I bought a, um, or I ordered a, a panel. Oh, panel, panel yep. Yeah. Yeah, and the panel I was really interested in was the floral bottom, and I thought, well, I could use that. Just use the bottom, and it has these um, women in the center of it. But I, I was really focused on the floral and tried to get. And so I learned a lot from it, let's say. Yes. But it didn't turn out exactly, and and the and the weight of the. So anyway, it 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 wasn't as successful as I'd like. But then the second one was much better. Now I'm using a pattern that I, and the other one was a pattern I was just starting to use and I didn't get the fit right on it and, and I didn't have quite enough fabric to make it all come together as well as I'd like. But um, the second one is a pink gingham and that, you know, I like gingham and yes, I like, you do. <laughs> and I'm using that, uh, that dress pattern that I, and I should probably check the number because I'm always bad with that too. I think it's simplicity. 1325, that same kind of fit and flare dress, yeah. and it just works great. I'm very pleased with how that looks. So there's that. And then I, I did order something for Christmas, for the Christmas. Um, yes. they did, yeah, so we'll see. we'll see how that goes, because I kind of went overboard on that, going, oh, yeah, I think I could work with this fabric. <laughs> it's, a, it's a learning experience when you're kind of like open to all these things, and you get to choose one, and you're like, Oh, how am I going to use it? <laughs> Every single project is a, a learning experience, but it's fun. It's really it's, it, been, it's yeah. been really it's been really fun. And now, um, this I, I, I the first few times I picked really quickly, and I told myself take your time, time take before you really pick. And then when I did send in my choices, um, they were already gone. <laughs> so, oh. so then I had to kind of pick quickly to try to figure out. But I'm, I, it's exciting to see whatever comes, it, and the fact that it's coming from you know halfway around the world, it's it's very nice of them to to include me in that. Yeah, and that that was the other thing I was surprised, you know, just to be asked to do that and flattered, and that was very nice. And uh, to be a pattern tester was was really a, a fun opportunity, even though I hadn't made a, a dress with that kind of collar before, and I didn't really have the white. Fabric. I was just, just learning through my claws, going, I don't know, if this is really for me. But in the end, it turned out great. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Pattern testing's fun. Um, and yeah, you do you do extend your skills. That's for sure. Yes. 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 I mean, because you want it to look nice, you want it to be out there, and and uh, you know, you want them, to, the the person who's putting all this work into their pattern, to have something that they can use. Um, you know, it's just nice a nice experience. I've tried it. Check that off the list. <laughs> Good on you. Oh, that's great. So, is it, for you it's now 10 o'clock in the morning. Is it time for coffee? Oh, well, it was time. I woke up a little extra early so I could have my coffee. Because, <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, I have my coffee. I'm going to get my husband's breakfast and have a second coffee with him. Um, I'm hoping that's enough. I'm, I, if there's any plenty, plenty. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for giving me your time today and then telling everyone about, you know, what it is that you've been doing. If I see you on Instagram every day, a few times a day, and I'm really glad that I got to meet you in real person. So. Yeah, that was so wonderful when you stopped by. It was just a, a nice, nice visit. Um, that's, that's one of the best things I've been able to meet. Uh, um, gosh, no, I can hear Allie. Um, Allie? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so Yes, that was lovely. We met her when she came, and then also Mel, Mel, Mel yeah, from Sydney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's funny how Australia has been. I guess people are on the way back home, so they make stop. <laughs> but it's but it's yeah. been a nice, the nice way to connect with people. 
And I do think about, oh, maybe that's one of our next few places to come and visit. Yes, you've got lots of people to visit, no problem. <laughs> it was lovely that Raquel gave us her time today to talk us through what she does in Taipei with her sewing, where she gets her fabrics from, and her sewing journey. This episode was produced and edited by myself, Maria, website designed by Susan Goodwin. You can find us on our website at Sew Organised Style Podcast. This episode and all the show notes, images and links are on our website. Go to our resources page for links to reputable organisations you can go to for help when you need it. Don't keep our podcast a secret. Tell your friends to listen to us. We're on iTunes and anywhere you can download good podcasts.